It's one of the hottest days of the year here in Helsinki, which means that some of the city's biggest beasts are easy to spot. And no, I'm not referring to the countless drunk fins out and about, but rather these ice-smashing behemoths. So why does Finland have so many icebreakers? When you think Finnish businesses, perhaps you think Angry Birds, Nokia, or those ubiquitous orange scissors in your kitchen drawer, aka Fiskars. But there's another industry that Finland dominates. Icebreakers are big in Finland, in all senses of the word. 60% of the world's in-use icebreakers have been built in Finland, and 80% are designed here. Finland's icebreakers go all over to the obvious destinations like Canada and Russia, but even all the way down south to Argentina and Australia. So what made Finland one of the smaller Arctic nations with no coast on the Arctic Ocean, the icebreaker capital of the world? After World War II, which was technically three separate wars for Finland, but that's a whole other video that I'll make at a separate point, Finland had to pay reparations to the Soviet Union. Back in the old days, Finland made it a point to pay back international debts, as you can see by this clip. With an on-time check. Mr. Secretary, I have the honor to present to you this check in further payment of Finland's indebtedness to the government of the United States. In addition to money, the Soviet Union wanted payments in the form of heavy industry. Finns built power plants, railroads, and even wooden houses for the Soviet Union. The Soviets also sought out Finnish icebreakers, with the Finns handing over some of their early models after the wars. Later, the Soviets began relying on Finland as the main supplier of their icebreakers, including a few of their nuclear power ones. Even though Finland had to pay reparations and cozy up to the Soviets, it was still an independent country, and its reparations pushed industrialization into hyperdrive. Also, Finnish people are weirdly brave around yeah, icebreakers. Yeah, really is brave, you guys. Huh. It actually breaks the ice. I never would have guessed that an icebreaker would break ice. Besides the geopolitics that push icebreakers, there are also the climatological reasons. Helsinki is the second most northern capital in the world after Reykjavik. This means that the Baltic Sea, especially the Gulf of Bothnia, freezes over frequently, making it ripe and fertile ground to test icebreakers. Not only for testing, but it's imperative to keep the shipping lanes open in the winter to keep the Finnish economy running. Not only is Finland's icebreaker industry huge, but the entire maritime industry as a whole is thriving in Finland. The industry is worth around 13 billion euros and it employs 48,000. The port of Helsinki is by some metrics either the most popular or second most popular passenger port in all of Europe. However, this might just be because nearby Estonia has relatively cheap alcohol and the best way to get there is by ferry. Today, Finland has nine icebreakers in use, with six calling Helsinki their home port. While the icebreakers in Helsinki are mostly used for commercial purposes, you can still catch some glances of the fleet in the harbor in Katajanoka. But if you're really looking for an adventure, up in the northern port of Kemi, an old icebreaker, the Sampo, has been re-outfitted for tourists. They'll even let you bob up and down in the water in a survival suit. And who knows, you might even catch a glimpse of the northern lights. But your best bet is probably not to go on the hottest day of the year. 